Welcome to Kolog Travels, where we take you on exciting adventures around the world. Today, we'll be showing your one-day itinerary in Macau. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the video featuring Macau, the Las Vegas of Asia. Our journey will start at Avenido Dr. Rodrigo Rodriguez Street. We decided to take a bus to Senado Square to visit Ruinas de Sao Paulo. In Macau, there are two bus companies that operate around the island. The first one is Transmac, which has 33 bus routes, and the second one is TCM, having 57 bus routes around the island. If you have internet connection, we highly recommend you using Google Maps when going around new places, since it recommends possible routes and bus numbers to get to a certain area, like the Senado Square. You know you've arrived at the Senado Square when you can see the fountain around stunning buildings with classical Portuguese architecture. The square was named after Leal Senado, a meeting place for the Chinese and Portuguese from the 16th to 18th centuries. It is located directly in front of the square where the Leal Senado building stands today. As we walk along the area, We'll pass by the Santa Casa de Misericordia and find a spot beside the building where you can take Instagrammable pictures. After the photo session, our next stop is the Igreja de Sao Domingos, a Baroque-style Catholic church that was built in 1587 under the Spanish-Dominican order. When we visited the church during Holy Week, we learned that most of the security personnel are actually Filipinos. Next in our itinerary is the famous ruins of St. Paul. While walking to the ruins, you will pass by an alley of food stores for pasalubongs. Majority of them are giving out free taste samples, so don't worry about getting hungry here. Our tip is to buy the pasalubongs after taking pictures at the ruins since you will be passing by the same alley when leaving the place. Finally, we've reached the ruins. Have you ever wondered why the ruins of St. Paul is only one wall? Apparently, it was caused by a fire in 1835. This fire destroyed Montfort buildings as well as the Jesuit college and church. Today, what remains is only the four wall of the church, which is now famously known as the Ruins of St. Paul. Normally, people take their pictures directly in front of the ruins. But for us, we like this side more. This side adds green colors in your background instead of other people photobombing you. After taking pictures, you can buy food at the stalls by the left side of the stairs. When we were there, there was a long line of people at the stalls selling curry balls and beef offal and tendon. You might want to try them as well. There is also another Instagrammable spot at the side of the ruins. From the food stall area, look for this signage in front of the Starbucks. But for our kababayans, make sure to drop by this shop and look for Kuya Ali as he can speak Tagalog, English, and Cantonese. He let us try many samples of all their meat products, and he was able to persuade us to buy a variety of jerkies as pasalubo. Make a right turn and look for the Pablo Cheese Start Shop. Beside the shop is the Instagrammable spot called Passion Lane. 
As we headed back to the Santo Domingo Church, it is now time to buy pasalubongs or souvenirs. We already bought some meat jerkies from Kuya Ali earlier, so at this point, our target pasalubongs were pastries. We definitely recommend you guys try these Portuguese egg tarts here at Koi K Bakery. Mm. They have the best egg tarts around the area, as they seem to sell out quickly on all the three of their branches along the alley. Their egg tarts is around 10 MOP per piece or around 60 per box. We bought all the remaining stocks in this stall to bring back to the Philippines. They also have other products such as candies, pastries, and other dried meats. Another famous egg tart shop that we tried were from this shop that was featured in Boys Over Flowers, a famous Asian television series. The egg tarts here were a bit more pricey at 15 MOP but bigger than Koi Case. However, flavor-wise, we still preferred Koi Case. Its texture and taste did not change when we reheated the ones that were brought back to the Philippines. So we're back here at the Santo Domingo Church. Before leaving the place, we decided to use the public restroom first. It's in the alley to the left of Santo Domingo Church. There is also a thrift shop by this alley if you have time to spare and want to shop around. Interestingly, if you enter the public restroom building, you'll actually find a wet market inside where you can order seafood if your room accommodations have cooking facilities. We allotted the entire morning here at Senado Square since we are a big group and spent a lot of time taking pictures. So expect to spend about 3-4 to four hours exploring the place. From Senado Square, we walked to Casino Lisboa, where we were dropped off in our previous video. We decided to take the free shell ride again to the Kotai Strip and be dropped off at the Grand Lisboa Palace Resort. If you have the extra time, you guys could also visit the Macau Tower. Ideally, you visit the tower at night to see the lights around Macau. Unfortunately, our flight back to the Philippines was already later that evening. shuttle drop-off is at the casino lobby of the Grand Lisboa Palace Resort. We walked outside and enjoyed the cold weather during our visit. At this side of Macau, you'll see a lot of high-end casinos and luxury hotel resorts. Each of them has their own interesting attractions and designs to entice people to go inside and hopefully play. As you walk along the Kotai Strip, you will understand why Macau is called the Las Vegas of Asia because of its rich history and many luxury casino hotels. 
Macau has become popularly known as a gambling capital of the world. We highly recommend you visit Macau if you have at least one day to spare. You can follow our itinerary in this video. If you have more time, you may also visit the Parisian, Galaxy, and Studio City hotels. Since our time is limited, we decided to go inside the Venetian Macau Hotel. Upon entering the place, you will feel like you have been transported to Europe. It feels like we are inside a European castle with paintings up high in the ceiling and gold fountains with all these accents. As we walk further inside, we enter the place that looks like Venice, Italy. This was actually the reason why the hotel was named Venetian Macau. You could even rent a gondola and get a feel of how it is in Venice. Straight ahead, you'll find the food court where we decided to order our food. We ordered from Good Luck, which was fast Cantonese and Chinese food which we were not disappointed. After eating, we headed back to our hotel, then went straight to the airport. Thank you everyone for reaching the end of our Hong Kong Macau series. As a new channel, we truly appreciate the support that we got from all of you in our videos. If you like this type of content, please like, subscribe to our channel to keep you updated with our future travel and food videos. Until our next destination, see you again!